Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence and in this video I'm going to be playing with some SBD London products with their Builder in a Bottle Gel and their Cat's Eye Gel Polish, I'm going to encapsulate that into the gel so I'll show you how to do that because you can, you can encapsulate gel polish, it's perfectly fine perfectly safe um, just make sure you cure it all properly of course you can also encapsulate it into acrylic if you so wish but um, I'm playing with uh, builder gel so yes these are the products that I'll be using they're all from SBD London uh, with the uh, website details are in the description box below as well for you great quality products for very reasonable prices um, I've been using SBD London products for years so yeah this is this is what I'll be sharing with you today so I'm going to be using the wonderful hand dolly she is a great client <laughs> she doesn't moan <laughs> she stays still it's a wonderful if you want to get yourself a realistic silicone practice hand then do head on over to www.handolly.co.uk and you're welcome to use my affiliate code which is a frost 10 for a discount on your order if you so wish of course you are not obligated to do so but if you want to you're more than welcome to so first things first obviously i prepared the nails and applied tips blended those in and as you saw just now i applied the base coat the rubber base coat is very nice to work with always when you're using base coats make sure it's a thin layer base coats can have a tendency to heat spike if you put too much on so always make sure your base coats are applied nice and thinly then cure that for 60 seconds and now I shall be using the black gel polish as my background for the cat's eye gel polish now you can use uh, different colors underneath your cat's eye gel polish depending on what color you use it will slightly change the color of the cat's eye it's really cool um, I've done that in previous videos so you know look at my back catalog you can see I don't always use black underneath a cat's eye because you can sort of change the color a little if you use a different color but I've, I wanted it to be the true purple uh, cat's eye so I've used black as my background but you're not restricted to just only using black so I'll apply, I'll apply two layers of that black gel polish on the index finger you see I kind of faded it back a little bit um, because I'm going to be doing an ombre on that one so that's why I have uh, sort of faded it back a little I, have been, I mean I didn't do it I wasn't really neat with my fade because it's, it's not a huge deal um, yeah it doesn't need to be perfect but if you are using um, um, a less opaque colour to ombre over the top then you would need to make your fade a little bit neater than what I did and of course if you get any on the skin do remove it with some rubbing alcohol or some uh, acetone on a little brush get that off the skin before you cure and here we go that's the cat's eye look how cool it is when you use the magnet on it it's it kind of looks like it's glowing velvet it's such a cool effect right, if you if you've been on my channel uh, watching some of my other videos you'll know how much I adore cat's eye gel polishes I think they are so cool and I always end up doing the velvet look because I just absolutely love it I mean look at that isn't that amazing look it's so cool I could play with these magnets all day long and faff about with it but yeah I just there's nothing I don't think that nothing beats the look of the cat's eye velvet gel polish look they just stunning absolutely stunning they literally look like they're glowing velvet it's awesome yeah I'm I'm big fan big fan anyway so yeah use the mag <laughs> magnet that magnet is also from SBD London um, cured that well flash cured those in place so that they don't move and then I'm going to do my ombre now 
I'm doing it in layers because when you're working with gel, the last thing you want to do is uh, put on a really thick layer, which could lead to a heat spike and also the product not curing uh, thoroughly. So do work in layers and um, make sure you're curing the layers thoroughly. You don't want any uncured product there. It's not. It's not great for your skin when you're filing it off and all of that. Um, so yeah, do make sure that you, you, you're properly curing stuff. Um, you can get away with flash curing like I did just then. I flash cured that last layer for, of the ombre because I know I'm going to be doing some more um, curing of the next nail. So I know that that last layer will get thoroughly cured along the way. Um, so in that sense, you see now I'm curing for 60 seconds that layer, which would then also cure the index finger. So yeah, um, you can do it that way too. Now, I'm doing a reverse French on this nail. So I'm building my extended nail bed. Now, I, I tend to be a bit more messy with my gel polish because it is a softer product and it files easily. I do, yeah, I'm not as neat with my gel polish, but, oh, I mean gel polish, builder gel. You can be neater than I am. Um, don't forget you can also get gravity to help you along if you need to. Um, I like to flash cure a lot to get it to stay still where I want it to, you know, to be. Um, but I also fully cure each layer as I go along. Like I said, that's really important. Don't put thick layers on you. The likelihood of you getting a heat spike is much higher that way. Um, also, you if you if you have applied a very thick layer and you're a bit worried about it, then put it on low heat mode. The lamp um, that is put it on low heat mode just to uh, help help it along. But if you keep your layers relatively thin, you shouldn't have any any issues with the heat spiking and with the builder in the bottle, um, it's the brush, because you're using the brush from the bottle, it, it has quite a bit of product on it. So you have to be a little bit more careful of, of your application. Um, don't put too much on in one go and, and you can, well, you can see how I'm applying it. I'm trying to spread out the product and not leave too much in one place so that it's not a huge amount because even though obviously hand dolly kept, she doesn't feel pain you know um, I still don't want to treat her that way I want to make sure that I'm sticking to the rules as it would be on a human um, so that I don't get out of practice and um, end up doing something silly to a real person so I like to treat hand dolly like she's a real person so therefore I will still working the layers I would normally work in on a um, actual human so yeah I've finished applying the builder in a bottle uh, French pink to the ring finger so now I'm just encapsulating the um, index finger to protect my ombre and to build up the nail thickness of course now Obviously, when I applied the cat's eye, it's a very thin layer, so I do need to build my strength with the clear. Um, I don't have to put so much uh, towards the cuticle area because I used the cover pink, you know, the French pink for that. So I don't need to put as much there, but I do need to encapsulate the ombre more specifically. And as you can see, I'm just turning the fingers upside down to get gravity to help me pull that uh, gel polish to the center of the nail to make sure my apex and everything is in place. If you are having trouble building your apex because your gel is sliding down the sides as it is here, if you can see, um, if you turn it upside down, it will help counteract that. But I tend to just more than more often than not I tend to just quickly flash cure it in place <laughs> to stop it from moving too much but it can still move in the lamp as it's curing so do do bear that in mind so some of it can still still slide down so it is handy to put the fingers upside down 
get the gel where you want it to be then flip it over and cure it, flash cure it quickly and then obviously you want to give it a full cure at some point before you file most definitely I, I'm, lots of flash curing always is a thing for me when I'm working with gel because gel moves it's not like acrylic um, it doesn't stay where you put it it will start moving so lots of flash curing when it comes to gel so do bear that in mind it can be a little time consuming when you when you consider how much curing and flash curing you've got to uh, do when you're building a set of nails which is not what you have to do when you're using acrylic but yeah so i'm just going to encapsulate that uh, French pink as well. You can build the entire nail with the French pink. It is a strength uh, gel, so you can build the entire nail of it. But as usual, um, I like to encapsulate in clear, whether it's acrylic, whether it's gel. I like to build my nail with the clear. It's the strongest. I like the glass effect that it gives. I just, I like putting everything under a layer of clear and building my strength with the clear and also it means my you know my coloured gels last longer my coloured acrylics then also last longer because I use the same concept that uh, in that way as well so yeah just um, building just encapsulating and building make sure you look at the nail from all different angles and like I said if you need to turn them upside down to get uh, the gel to be in the right place and, and build your apex then you know, there's nothing just get gravity to help you rather than work against you just turn them upside down it's not a problem and then quickly flash cure and it will sort of freeze it in place but so you're still working in layers of course because like I said that you do not want to put too much gel on in one go that's not gonna be nice it's gonna heat spike no matter what brand you're using if you put too much gel on the likelihood is you're gonna get a heat spike and that's that's not very nice oh that was my cushion there I did <laughs> not break wind <laughs> you heard that, that yeah that's my cushion behind my back <laughs> I shifted position <laughs> Oh dear, I'm easily amused. Anyway, <laughs> just just carry on building your nail. You see how I put that last string of gel in the middle of the nail because obviously I'm, I'm I'm trying to build the structure of the nail. I want it to be nice and strong. So yeah, the shapes are not looking great at the moment, but don't worry, the filing will sort that out like I said gel moves it doesn't stay where you want it and I'm much more messy with my gel than I am with my acrylic it's just the way I work you may be neater than I am but anyway so I've removed the tacky layer because I want to refine my smile line so I shall be using hand file and just sharpening and crisping up that uh, smile line because I want it to be a lovely crisp French so yeah just take a hand file make sure that you're pushing against the wall that you've built not down onto the nail itself because if you're pushing down onto the nail you're going to file into the nail you're going to make a deep deep groove into the nail and if you're working on a client you know that's the last thing you want to do is file down into their natural nail not good so make sure you're putting pressure against the wall not pushing down onto the nail itself yeah once I've got that the way I want it dust it off and then use some rubbing alcohol on a lint free wipe to just make sure all of the dust has been removed and now I'm going to use the black gel polish to go around my French extended nail bed that is uh, use a little brush to get up the wings because it's very um, the brush is, is more, way bigger than those tiny uh, sort of sharp points up the side walls. So yeah, you just use a little detailer brush, get up those side wings, get that cured for 60 seconds. Second layer, I mean, you don't need a second layer. You could get away with one layer, but I wanna make sure it's totally jet black. So yeah, I'm just 
applying two layers of the black again using my detailer brush to get up the wings I've also gone up the wall um, I like to cover the, 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 the actual wall of the the extended nail bed as well some people don't do that they just um, go around the wall it's up to you um, that's how you get like the 3d French look is if you go up the wall but you don't I mean with this uh, cat's eye gel polish it's not as noticeable to be a 3d French if you know what I mean so it's it's yeah it's not really a 3d French kind of thing it's just I wanted to make sure that it was totally up that way I get a really nice crisp line when I file because I've gone right up to up the wall so therefore when I file the nail um, and I get a, the, the small line reveal it will be lovely and crisp so yeah make sure you do the whole wall and as you can see I'm applying the cat's eye gel polish and faffing about with the magnet always um, remember that if you're not happy with the way the magnetized um, gel polish has, has gone you can just swipe it over with the brush from the bottle and start again that's it's so much fun playing with the cat side because it's not going to set in place until you cure it in the lamp so yeah you can you can play with the magnet as much as, as you like before you cure it in place it's good to uh, try different magnets as well because you get different effects but I always tend to go for the velvet look I've yeah like I said many many times over I, I just love the way it looks and I think it's gorgeous so again just encapsulating it with the clear builder gel flash curing it in place don't forget like I said I will give it a full cure once I've got the uh, thickness that I require because I want a nice strong thick nail I don't want it to break but I don't want it to be too you know bulky of course but I also want to make sure that I don't file into any of that gel polish of course so yeah nice encapsulation turn it upside down if need be use the brush to tease the gel polish down the center to just build up the uh, middle of the nail and I'll just keep going until that nail is as thick as I need it to be. Again, just... Well, you can see how I, I tease the gel around. Sometimes I do lines from, from vertical lines. Sometimes I do horizontal lines. So it's all about where I need that gel specifically to be going. Um, I just tease the product where I need it to go. As long as you're keeping contact with the brush, and the gel, the gel will follow your brush if that makes sense. So just very um, light touch so that you're just sort of skimming the surface with the gel, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so I gave that a full cure, removed the tacky layer, and now it's filing time for my frosty filing freaks. If you are not a frosty filing freak, then do go ahead and skip to the timestamp you saw in the corner of the screen. <laughs> but for my frosty filing freaks, here we go. So I'm going to use my e-file as usual. Now I've got a carbide bit and I'm concentrating on my side walls because I did lose the shape of the nails a little bit because, you know, I'm, like I said, messy with my gel. So I wanna make sure that I sort out those side walls. And if I'm using my e-file, it means I've got less to do with my hand file, which saves my poor little fingers. And I'm also uh, revealing that smile line at the same time, why not, might as well. Um, I try and keep to a routine. I have many different routines when I'm filing nails. But as long as you just stick to one routine um, at a time per set of nails, you should be fine. That's how you get a nice uniform set. So as you saw, I went back to the index finger to do the same as what I'd done on the middle finger. You know, that's all about, you know, routine. So on the ring finger, I'm doing the same thing that I did on the other fingers. You know, sorting out those side walls but also sorting out the uh, body of the nail while I'm at it but leaving the cuticle and apex area alone for this uh, moment I will get to that eventually 
So now I've switched to my hand file to really sharpen up those sidewalls, make them really nice and straight. There's only so much you can do with your e-file, but if you want really sharp, sharp, straight lines, you will need to use your hand file because, you know, that's what hand files are really, really good at doing, is getting straight sides. Now you see I'm supporting that nail on both sides. So as you can see, I've, as I'm supporting, um, as I'm filing one side, I'm using my fingers to support the nail from the other side. And when I file this side, as you can see, I will then use the sort of pad of my thumb to support the other side of the nail. So when you're working on long nails especially, I mean, you should always be supporting the nails, whether they're short or long, but especially when they're really long, you really need to be giving support to that nail because it can be really painful for your client if you are just filing away and not supporting the nail so that it's, you know, being pushed and pulled all over the place. That can be very uncomfortable. So always, always support that nail from each side to the opposite side that you are filing on when you're hand filing so important and it, it, you don't it, nails can snap by the way if when you're filing if you're not careful so definitely you want to avoid snapping the nail but most importantly you want to avoid inflicting pain on your person that you're working on so yes support that nail from all different angles as you can see i've also switched to, to a uh, sanding band wonderful sanding band and i'm just using that to file around the cuticle area get that nice and flush with the natural nail and just basically smooth over the rest of the surface try and even out where i've done those very sharp uh, sidewall lines i want to blend those into the curve of the nail i don't want to leave that step that 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 sort of corner there i want to blend it in i don't want that sharp edge on to not be contoured into the rest of the nail the nail should be a nice curve from sidewall to sidewall if you're looking down the barrel of the nail it's got you want a nice semicircle, and you won't have that if you don't um blend in the um side walls that you filed nice and, sh and sharp if that makes sense it's very hard to explain in words but you i think you'll know what i mean as i'm describing it so yeah just smoothing over and blending in any um like i said the the, the sharp edges but also making sure there's no uh, dips and or lumps and bumps you want to just make sure the surface is nice and smooth um, and very even from sidewall to sidewall look at it from all different angles um, if you're just looking at the bird's eye view you're not necessarily going to see if you have a lump or a bump or a dip so or if you know one side of the nail is thicker than the other so it's very important for you to tilt that nail and look at it from sideways down the barrel from the other side so that you're making sure that nail is nice and even all the way around and then for just um, a bit of extra smoothing I'll use my buffing block give it a good old buff over make sure it's nice and smooth from free edge to cuticle area, just, you know, the entire nail, of course, around, around the cuticle area, the free edge, you see down the barrel of the nail. Um, it's sort of like up one side, around the cuticle area, down the other side, and then down the barrel, if that makes sense. So it's even a routine with, with the um, sanding block. If, yeah. And I also go underneath the nails because that removes any frills. I don't like frills that are underneath the nail because you know when you're filing you can get frills on the underside of the nail and they can be really annoying and you want to pick them. So do just give it a quick whiz underneath the nail and um, remove any frills. Also stop and look before you put all your things away. Stop and look at all of the nails together. They are a set so they should look similar. So you want to look at them all together and make sure they're all looking very, very similar before you put all your stuff away. And once you're happy with it, then you can remove all the dust, uh, give the hands a wash with some soap and water, then wipe over with some rubbing alcohol to make sure you remove any oils that have been applied by this soap because you don't want to leave that on 
and then you are ready for top coat but in this case I am going to be using some of the gel polish first so I'm applying the black first I'm just doing sort of um, an outline around the entire nail so I'm going to start off with the sides first um, just using the black and a striper brush to just give me a nice outline of the free edge and side walls first and then I will go around the cuticle area once I've got it um, to the thickness I want because I want it I don't want it to not be visible from the bird's eye view so I'm making sure that it's a thick enough stripe around the sides that you can still see it from the bird's eye view so I'm just building that up slowly because I've got shaky hands I don't want to just go in um, thick straight away I just want to sort of slowly build up the thickness because if my hands shake it can make a right old mess and you will see that I will need my cleanup brush as usual but I'm, I'm trying to be as careful as possible not to make it too thick straight away look I've already got it on the skin terrible anyway I will get that off gel polish is not made for skin do bear that in mind it's best not to get it on the skin but accidents do sometimes happen and in which case just yeah clean it off with some rubbing alcohol or some acetone make sure you get that off the skin before you cure it of course definitely not good get it off the skin it's, yeah nail products are not meant for skin they're not cosmetics in that sense that they're made to go on the skin they're made for the nails that's it skin contact is um, not advised so well they're chemical so it can cause irritation which is contact dermatitis and you don't want to become allergic to uh, nail products so yeah best to try not to get it on the skin as much as possible but obviously don't panic if it does just clean it up and then when you finish the nails make sure you give the hands a good wash with soap and water obviously hand dolly's not going to get an allergic reaction but you know when you're working on a real human make sure they wash their hands with soap and water as soon as possible after they've had contact on their skin before you uh, put the um, cuticle oil on so make sure any residue is gone that way and then you can apply the cuticle oil and finish finish the set off I'm just applying the cat's eye now over the top of the black because obviously I cured that black in place and so yeah time to apply the cat's eye layer over the top cat's eye gel polish can be thick so try not to apply too much in one go um, it gel polish is thick anyway but I've found that some cat's eye gel, gel polishes can be really thick so try and keep the layers um, as thin as possible because you don't want to lose the sh too much of your shape of the nail you know you spent all that time filing it nice and sharp so you, you know you don't want to lose the shape and with effect effectively four layers of gel polish because I've done two layers of the black I'm doing a layer of the purple and then I'm going to put top coat over the top it can you can lose your shape very easily that way with that many layers of gel polish so do be careful not to apply it too thickly I'm having a play with the magnet it's not going exactly the way I want it to go because it's just a thin line it's not over the entire nail it's a bit tricky to get the velvet look that I'm, I'm I want because it's just an outline oh so it's a bit more tricky but you can reset it all like I said before if you're not happy with the way you have magnetized it then just use the brush and a bit more of the gel polish to just swipe along and sort of reset it and then you can apply the magnet and hopefully you'll get the look you're on look, you're on the look you want it in the first place so I'm just gonna faff about with that magnet and you can see the glow start and you're like oh, oh that's what I was looking for and then I lost it and I was like no so yeah, faff about with the magnet until, <laughs> until you get that glow that you're looking for. It can be a little bit tricky, like I said, because I'm working with just that, that thin stripe. It's like, oh, how do I get this to work the way I want it to work? In the end, I got it pretty much the way I wanted it to. 
not quite all the way but enough so yeah I flash cured that in place so now it's time to bling it baby using the SPD London diamond gel I'm just going to apply some of these crystals these are um, they're like chameleon volcano something crystals I can't remember what they're called but they kind of color shift purple red kind of orange it's really they're very very pretty so I thought I'd use some of those but just keep it simple so I've gone for just a, a just a row of different sizes down the center of the nail so I don't want to detract too much from the cat's eye because you know that's the center of attention in my opinion so I don't want the the crystal to distract from that too much so I kept that very simple not too many crystals so now it's time to top it off and keep it tough and look at this <gasps> look at that isn't that just gorgeous that oh it just looks like it's literally glowing at you it's so cool it's fascinating the, the cat's eyes there we go again <gasps> look so cool oh i love these cat's eyes the magic when you top coat just oh gorgeous so um i will top coat around my crystals i never top coat over the crystals if you top coat over the crystals you will lose the facets and they will just look like little little round balls <laughs> just little round balls and they won't have the the facets which catch the light which makes makes them sparkle so just top coat around them kind of buff the um butt the brush up against them so the top coat is right at the base of them but not over the top of them and use a detailer brush if you need to get around the cuticle area i also whiz over the tips before i put them in the lamp because sometimes the gel polish can pull at the edges so just to make sure i will sort that out before i cure it and this is the finished set so i hope you like it and i'd like to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel watching this video some and spending some of your most precious time with me thank you i appreciate you ever so much if you would like to join the frosty family we'd love to have you please go Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you have enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form do please click that like button it really helps my channel out and if you feel like it you're more than welcome to leave me a comment i'm happy to talk to you but that's all i've got for this time peeps you take care now and i will speak to you all again very very soon bye for now Someday soon, i'm gonna make it